All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Dawn Anderson, and I am the Hunter Education Archery Education Coordinator with the Nevada Department of Wildlife. And today we are going to cover some archery stuff. And I have some help with me today from the amazing Laura and John Valley. If you guys have any questions, um, please direct them into the Q&A box and not into the chat box. We're using Q&A today. Um, otherwise, I'm going to share my screen and we'll get started. I have a PowerPoint and then we're going to do some visual demonstrations. I hope you guys enjoy. All right. So again, today um, we're going to cover some archery stuff. My name is Dawn and we have John and Laura Valley helping us. They are associated with NASP and the school district and they're also instructors of mine and they're fabulous resources for me. I'm happy to have them on board today. All right. All right, so some tips, pointers, interesting facts about archery. The oldest broadheads were found in Africa and they're dated about 64,000 years. Some of the oldest bows found are dated about 10,000 years ago, around the late Paleolithic time period. And the reason why they haven't been able to trace them a little bit longer than that is because the materials that they use decompose. So that's what we have. The oldest time frame is 10,000 years for a bow. Archery was used first for hunting and then used for military purposes in its early years. During the 19th century, archery became a recreational sport, meaning that we started using it more outdoors and just for fun. Archery made its first appearance in the France Olympics in 1900. So archery has been around for a long time. Only men could compete in the first games and there were no participants from the US. So everybody else competed were men and from other parts of the world. What a long way we have come because now we have Olympics, we have archery in the Olympics, um, US competitors, global competitors, men, women, people with disabilities, people with all kinds of abilities from every background demographic and it is a wonderful thing. It just proves how universal and awesome archery is. So there's different types of bows and I have some that I'm gonna share with you today. The different types of bows that, um, there's four of them that I'm gonna share with you is a long bow. And the long bow, as you can see, is just a really long bow. They're typically really, really long. There's no curve to them. It's just a stick and a string. And that's what we see a lot of the, the ancient, like Robin Hood times, that's what we see um, is what was used then, is the long bow. Then you have the recurve bow. The recurve bow, as you can see, is another longer bow. Um, they're typically four or six feet long. They're really, really long. Um, and this recurve bow, as you can see towards the ends of it where the string attaches, has a slight little curve to it. And that's why it's called a recurve bow. The long bow is just stick and string. Recurve bow, sometimes you'll see, like on this one, has a quiver that holds your arrows. Sometimes you'll see sights on it. Um, but typically, again, that's usually a stick and a string as well. It's just a curved stick. Then you have the compound bow, which is the most popular and common bow that you see. The compound bow is um, comprised, it's, it's carbon, you'll see different materials, aluminum. Um, so they can be made with, with quite a few different materials. Um, they have cams or wheels on them. And that's what helps pull those strings back. Then most of the time you'll see accessories on it, such as sights or um, re um, whisker biscuits or some type of release on it. You'll also see um, quivers on them. You'll see stabilizers on them. So there's a lot of accessories that can go onto a compound bow. Again, the most popular bow, um, most popular for hunting, um, I think that covers compound bow. Then you have the crossbow, which you don't see too often, especially here. You'll see them more on the east side of the country. Um, crossbows are shorter in stock. They have a um, bullet, like a bolt-like uh, arrow that comes out of them. They can shoot 400 feet per second. They're really, really quick, and they actually have like a trigger on them that resembles a gun. So 
that's your four types of bow, your long bow, your recurve bow, your compound bow, and your crossbow. So I'm gonna give you a visual today. I'm gonna to have some help. Um, and, but there's a few things that I wanna cover before we shoot. Things to keep in mind. You wanna make sure that you have a safe location. You wanna know your background. You wanna know what's behind it. You wanna know what you're shooting at. Very, very first and foremost thing, you always wanna be safe. Then you're gonna have a starter bow. So we recommend Genesis bows. They're great bows and they're very, very universal for anybody who is interested in getting started with archery. Um, they're adjustable, um, they're fabulous bows. You can put them in anybody's hands from three years old to 98 years old, wonderful bows. Um, then you're gonna have arrows and arrows are made out of different materials. You have metal, carbon, wood, that's some of the, uh, the types of materials that they use to make arrows. And then you're also going to have a target. And again, know your target and know what's behind it. Morel has great box um, 3D targets that are made specifically for NASP. There's tons of different um, archery companies out there that produce targets that are wonderful for getting started that are inexpensive. So without further ado, I'm going to stop my screen sharing and I'm gonna give you a visual. So today I'm gonna to stand up. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Again, if you have any questions, if you can't hear me, just put them in the Q&A and then Laura and John will answer your questions. Otherwise, let's, let's do this. Let me move my chair. How about I start real quick? Let me show you, let me show you the bows I have. So this right here is a NASP bow. This is one of the Genesis bows that we use for the NASP program. And I keep saying NASP and you're probably questioning what that is. That's the National Archery in the Schools program. And it's a program we have right here in Nevada, in Washoe County, all over the state. If you wanna get involved, I'm gonna put contacts down there later. Um, so this is the bow that we use, again, universal. This one has some accessories on it that we typically don't use for the NASP tournaments. This one has a whisker biscuit on it, and this one has a quiver on it. So basically, I'm just going to show you the parts really quick. So you've got your strings, and you have your cables. This is your cable slider. It also has a peep sight right there. If it's round, it's a wheel. If it's oblong, it's a cam. These are called limbs, just like our limbs. So you have an upper limb and a lower limb. These are limb bolts. These adjust the weight on your bow. This is your hand rest right there. This is your sight window. And that pretty much sums up your compound bow. That's your compound bone. That's what Orion's gonna be shooting with today. And then I have a recurve bow, much larger, harder to fit in the screen. As you can see, it has that curve right here that we were talking about, a long bow straight, kind of curved right there. The recurve has the curve that comes off on the end. And again, you see no accessories or anything on it. It's pretty much just your stick and your string. And most people think these are easier to shoot than your compound. They are much more difficult, much more challenging. So let's shoot. All right, Orion, are you ready? I have Orion helping me today. Hopefully you guys can hear me. We're gonna come over here and I'm gonna go through the 11 steps to archery success according to NASP, which again is your National Archery in the Schools program. Here we go. Put your bow on your toes. All right, you'll hear the phrase bows on toes often when you're at the archery range or whatever. Um, the reason we use that phrase is that a way we know that everybody is being safe. We know where everybody's bows are. We know where everybody's arrows are until it's time to shoot. So we keep our bows on our toes until we hear whistle commands. You'll hear whistle commands when you're at the archery range or if you shoot for death. So our very first step to archery success is your stance. And your stance is the way that you stand. As you notice, Orion has, you can see the line and he's got one foot behind the line and one foot in front of the line. His hips 
are lined up with his legs. His legs are slightly apart and his front foot is facing the target. Number two is your knock. So you're gonna take that arrow out of the quiver and you're gonna go up and over your bow. You know how to do this, Sue. Yeah. <laughs> hold your bow up, hold your bow up, up and over the bow. And then if you notice on that arrow, there's two different colors of veins. So what your veins are, you have your tip of your arrow, then you have the shaft of your arrow, and those green, yellow colored things that we're looking at right now, those are your veins. And then the white thing on the very end is called your knock. And you're always gonna have, so you have two different colors on your veins. Your odd color is always going to be facing you or pointed out. So that's number two, knocking your arrow. Number three is your draw hand set. So that's your three fingers. So we call that the scout's honor right there, three fingers, and they go right underneath your knock. You have a little line right here. I'm gonna show you guys right there. And the string is gonna go right there underneath there when you pull it. No Texas, no splitting them or anything, three fingers underneath. And the reason we do that is because it locks your finger locks that knock in place to where the arrow doesn't move around. So that's number three is your draw hand set. Number four is your bow hand set and that's your front hand, Orion's left hand, see where it's set right there on the handle? You're gonna get that comfortable and it's gonna come out, hopefully you guys can hear me. It's gonna come out like this. You have this, this fat part of your hand right here that's gonna sit right there. And then these fingers are gonna come out just gently. You're not gonna grip that bow. You don't wanna grip that bow because it will cause that bow to move back and forth. So nice and gently, you're just gonna cup right here. You lay that bow right there in your hands, okay? Then you're going to pre-draw, which means you're gonna lift that bow up Okay, and then you're gonna draw. So you're gonna pull it right back to the corner of your mouth like a fish hook. You're gonna look down that arrow. You're gonna line up your shot and you're gonna release it. And then you reflect and follow through and see if you're happy with your shot. What could you have done differently? Did you like the way it feel, felt? Did it feel good? Um, and then you adjust it until you are shooting the way that you want to shoot. So those are your 11 steps to archery according to NASP, your national archery in the schools. I'm gonna go back. And the reason why I show you this is because it's easy, it's super easy to shoot and to get involved and to get outdoors. And it's just a blast. It's a, it's a really, really good time. All right, so you wanna get your school involved in shooting archery. You wanna get onto the NASP program. You wanna get bows, you wanna get arrows, you wanna shoot with your friends. This is how you get involved. So again, it's called NASP, National Archery in the Schools Program. And you can have your teacher, your staff, a guardian. They can contact me. There's my contact information right there. Then the next step is we get everybody certified so we go through a training, an eight hour training, and the valleys are wonderful at this training. Then we order your supplies, they go to your school, and then you can start teaching. The cool thing is you get to compete in local and state tournaments and you get to win cool prizes and even bows. So your whole school can win medals and they get t-shirts and it's a blast, it's a good time. I have some pictures I'm going to show you guys of some of the tournaments and some of the some of our students and participants out there shooting. Again, you saw how easy and how much fun it is. You get outside, you get some fresh air. And you don't have to hunt animals. You can shoot targets. You can do 3D targets. There's tons of things. And you can see there on the left hand side that the, the kiddos there are using Genesis bows and they're shooting 3D targets. And on the right there, they're shooting box targets. And that's at a, at a competition, at a tournament. 
And then I have some pictures of our tournament here and the t-shirts that the students, the participants all received for shooting. And we do a big tournament down in Las Vegas and it is a good time. There's tons and tons and tons of students there. But archery is an amazing sport. It's awesome to get outside. It's universal. Anybody can do it. Um, if you have any questions, you can put them in those Q&A boxes. You can also contact me. Here's my contact information if you want to use your phone and take a picture of it or if you want to reach out to me. There's my contact information. And you also have John and Laura Valley's information. Again, they're fabulous. They are BAI certified. There's also no space between Laura Valley. There's like a little space right there. It's just lvalley123 at gmail.com if you wanted to reach out to them as well. Otherwise, that's all I have. Does anybody have any other questions that we can answer? John or Laura, do you have anything that you want to include? Well, we haven't finished all the questions. There are lots of questions okay. about maybe you could address where to get a bow. Yes, so there are quite a few places you can get a bow. You could go to one of our local archery shops. Um, we have a few. Um, there's also, they're all over the state. We have archery shops all over the state. You can also get them from any vendor, sporting goods vendor. So Shields, Sportsman's Warehouse, um, you can order them online. Just make sure that you're getting a, make sure you do your research and don't buy like a used bow that you don't know much about. Um, make sure that, be, and they're pretty, they're relatively inexpensive to get started with. Um, the Genesis bow startup, I've seen them at $199 at $199 and um, that's pretty much shoot ready. You can go buy it and go in your backyard and start shooting right then and there. So, and if you're interested, you could go down to one of your local archery ranges and they rent out the equipment so you can try it first. You do, is it a difficult sport to learn? Are there any other questions that I can answer? Is there an archery range around that they can go to? Or how do they find a local archery range? You can Google it. Um, it depends on where you're at. If you're in Reno or Sparks, we have Wasting Arrows and we also have High Desert Archery. We also have a couple outdoor ranges that are free of charge. You can go out to them. Um, you can Google them. That's the best way to find them. Also getting involved. You can reach out to me. I can send you a, a list of them. You can find them on Endow's website. So the Nevada Department of uh, Wildlife's website has them listed. Um, let's see, what's another way that you can find out? Get involved. Find um, somebody you know maybe that shoots archery or maybe your gym teacher might know. Um, yeah, that's the best way to do it. If you contact somebody from a local archery club, so Nevada Bow Hunters Association, um, Silver Arrow Bowmen. If you get a hold of one of them, they'd be happy to, to meet up with you and teach you the ropes as well and give you some ideas on where to shoot. How about 3D archery? Can you explain a little bit more about what 3D archery is? Absolutely. So 3D archery is, so Typically you have the like a box target or you'll have a round target. The box target are the square ones and then your rounds are just your start, standard round ones. Your 3D targets are the ones that are shaped like animals or um, we have everything from bighorn sheep to antelope. I've seen them for elk. I've seen them for, they have aliens, they have zombies, they have apples, they have tons of different um, types of 3D targets out there. Uh, let's see, 3D targets, they have, so on your standard target, you have, I can't really, I don't want to turn the camera because I don't want to mess anything up. So you have your colors on it that are, you know, black, yellow, white, red, and blue. 
um, on a 3D target, you have a, there'll be like a circle in the middle of it. And it's typically, you'll have a black and a white circle. Um, the scoring is a little different. Um, those are all ropes that you learn once you get involved. And every, if it's a competition or if it's um, like a, a local tournament, the, um, the way that they score them is differently. So it would depend on the type of um, event that you're at. But typically you have like a, um, the middle ring is your 10 ring, um, that's your highest score or where your X is. And then you'll have like an eight. And if you hit anywhere on the target, it's a six or something on that line. So that's what 3D targets are. 3Ds are fun. So lots of different types of archery out there, depending on what you're interested in. Like I said, you have your compound bows, you have your recurve bows, your long bows. Um, there's target bows that they shoot for in the, in the Olympics. Those have tons and tons of different equipment on there. Um, I say get out there, try it. Um, try the different types of bows. What works for one person doesn't always work for the next person. And sometimes it's an evolution. Sometimes you start with, you know, a, a recurve and you end up shooting a compound and then go back to a recurve. So here's the good good. question. If our parents have a bow, can we try their bow? That is a good question. I would say it would depend on the type of bow that they have. You want to take certain things into consideration, like your eye dominant. So if you're left eye dominant or right eye dominant, um, and the best way to do that is what we call the aperture method. And what you do is you, um, so if you have a clock across the wall, you're gonna take a look at that wall, at that clock on the wall, and you put your hands up in a triangle and you put them straight in front of your face and you line it up on that clock. Then you close your left eye and then you close your right eye. And if the object doesn't move, that's your dominant eye. So you always wanna shoot a bow with your dominant eye. That's what you're gonna look at the arrow down the line for. Um, then the second thing you're gonna take into consideration if you're gonna shoot their bow, um, is the weight and how heavy it is because you don't want to injure yourself. You don't want to hurt yourself. Remember, safety is the very, very first thing that we always take into consideration. If they have a recurve or a longbow, I say go for it. Be careful. Be careful not to get your side of your arm and get your archer's tattoo there. Um, just be safe. Let your parents know what you're doing. Again, make sure that you have a suitable backstop, you know, you have a target, you have a safe area to do it. Um, talk to your parents. If your parents have a bow and they have a long bow or a recurve and it's, it's something that you could potentially be safe and shoot, then mm -hmm. I say go for it. Keep up, oh, let's scroll here. It's always best to have a bow that that fits you though, because bows are very personal and they're very, what, like I said, what works for one person doesn't work for the next person. So for example, I can't shoot my husband's compound bow and he can't shoot my compound bow. So it, it just make sure it's tailored to you. And again, that safety, safety, safety thing. What's a quiver? A quiver, okay. Let me find, there are different types of quiver. So you have like a hip quiver. Um, that's one that goes around your waist and puts your arrows in. You have a ground quiver, which we had down here on the ground. You can also use a orange safety cone. Um, a quiver is something that holds your arrows. Uh, we also have a quiver on, Oh, nope, I don't have it on this guy and I didn't bring mine out here. Um, so quivers you'll see on the sides of the bow as well. They attach here and then they hold your arrows. So that's what a quiver is. It's, it's a tool that holds your arrows. Okay. All right, I think our time is up. And hopefully I covered everything and I hope you guys get out and learn about archery 
and maybe we'll see you out there shooting NASP or some 3D tournaments. Otherwise, thank you, Miss Laura and John. I appreciate you guys being here and supporting me and for your time. All right. Bye, guys.